All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about how to make a finder chart. So once you've finished all of your analysis, you're getting ready to publish your paper and get it out there. Um, one of the things you have to make is a finder chart so that other people can find your star when they look at an image. So the first thing, you're gonna start out with one of your images up on your um, Astro Image J. Look at the other videos if you don't remember how to do that. And once we're here, we're just gonna kind of fiddle around with these buttons down here to try and get a good level of exposure. And I mean, a good level of exposure is anywhere in here. We don't want it to be too grayed out. We don't wanna not be able to see our stars. So let's pretend we're trying to analyze these two stars here. That's what we're gonna do our finder chart for. So we're gonna look around, we're gonna try and find, you know, a good, good value. If I go too far this way, notice they disappear. Move it back, you know, that's, that's pretty good right there. So I'm gonna stick with that. So once I've found, you know, a good looking area, I mean, the other thing I wanna take note of is if those are my stars, I don't wanna be taking the image from clear out here. I do wanna zoom in to them, but one thing that's important is I do not wanna lose other stars around them. So I wanna make sure that there's enough stars around them so that if someone were to actually use my finder chart, they can find where the stars are located. So the next step is we're just gonna take a screenshot of this area here. Now, um, one thing to point out, this little blue circle will remain if you screenshot it with there. So what I like to do is I like to bring it down where I'm not going to use it. And then to take a screenshot on a Mac, all this is for the Mac, you're going to press Command-Shift-4 at the same time. And then we're just going to click and drag the section that we're taking a screenshot of. So just come up here to the top left corner, move out. And I'm going to try and capture the, the axes for sure, the northeast um, setup for my stars. And then I'm actually going to capture a couple other stars that I can. So I'm just gonna go to this range, which I think is good. So that screenshot just got taken, it just went to my desktop. So on a Mac, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come and grab that screenshot. And um, if it doesn't automatically go to your desktop, it'll ask you where to save it. You can save it wherever you want. Well, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come and get that screenshot and we're gonna open it up. So it automatically opens it up with what's called preview. If you have an option, that's what you wanna open it up as. Because what we're going to do when we make finder charts, convention says that we need to have black stars on a white background. So that was back in the day, they, um, they wanted it, these were all printed. And so if you had an entire black background, that was a lot of ink, ton of ink. So convention says that we need to make the stars black, the background white. So the easiest way to do that is just to invert our black and white scale. So what we're going to do to do that is we're going to go up here on this top bar with the preview gonna move on over to tools and we're gonna to go to adjust color and one thing we're gonna do the very first thing is notice that we have a green a yellow a blue and then white stars so one way that we can make everything the same is we can take this saturation bar right here and we can move all the way to the left and now everything's grayed out so it doesn't look like it has any color all right and then the next thing notice these little triangles with squares underneath them this is how we're gonna flip our scales so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this one about this far. I'm just setting a random distance, but then we're gonna take this one and move past it. And that inverts our black and white scale. And then you can mess around here however you want and try and make it, you know, here it becomes super splotchy. We don't maybe want it super splotchy. Maybe we want it more like this. So we can mess around here and try and find an optimal look that we want. This is great. Something that looks like this, where you can see the stars we're going for, um, you can see the other stars, the numbers, notice our scales are good, it's not too splotchy, it looks great. So we're just going to call this good. So we're done with this, we can X out of this, and we can actually X out of this screenshot if we want, we're going to be using it later, and it automatically saves because it's preview. So we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to X out of that. Then we're going to pull up PowerPoint, just some blank presentation, right? And I'm going to delete out these boxes because we're not going to use them here. Um, the next thing, we're going to be putting a white thing on a white background. I don't like that. You can do it if you want. So just personal preference for me, I'm going to come over here and choose a different color background. This looks great. It's not white. It's not black. <laughs> It'll work great to have the image. So I'm just going to drag that screenshot right on over here. Um, if, you don't, if you can't drag it, you can always just do the right click, and then you can insert. Or you can come over here, do insert, and then you can do pictures or screenshot, whatever, however you want to run that. I just drag from my screen over, it makes my life easier. So now that we're here, we're gonna edit this so that we can get it looking good. So I'm just gonna blow it up to a good size. Doesn't super matter at this point. I'm just blowing it up to a good size so it's easier for you to see. So the next step that we're gonna do is we're inserting, right? So I'm already on the right spot. We're gonna insert some shapes. We're gonna insert arrows 
So we're gonna denote where our stars are. So these arrows, you can either do this one or this one, we'll rotate it after. We're gonna do these arrows and we're just gonna draw an arrow. Now we don't want it to be too wide. We don't want it to be too narrow. We want it to look like an arrow. So that's a good, good arrow size right there. So we'll just come over here, we'll grab it. We'll make sure it's you know lined up where we want it. Great. And realize it's orange, we're gonna fix that later. So don't worry about that. The easiest thing to do next is just Copy that with Command C and then Command V, paste another one. And we can just come over and we can just steal this and use it for our other star. Um, and just for sake of wanting it to look different, I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna rotate it so that they're not at the exact same angle, both of them. Oops, there I'm resizing it. So that's not the goal, but it works just fine. So now that I've made that arrow, um, looks like it's a little different from the other one. So we're just gonna try that again. I accidentally screwed up, so. You just want your arrows to be the same for consistency's sake. No other reason than that. So we're gonna come here, rotate it. And then once we get it, we're just gonna bring it down closer to our star so that we know that we're pointing at those two stars. And then we're gonna come over here. We're gonna insert again. This time we're inserting a text box. We're gonna insert a text box here and we're just gonna type, let's pretend that this is the A component star. So I'm gonna type a letter A. Oh, it looks like we're writing with white ink, which is not great. So just come over here, click the black. Now we're writing with black ink. So there's my A. And I can grab the text box and move it so that the A moves. And then I'm just going to insert another one to label the other star B. If you have more stars, you can label them C, you can label them D. Not super hard. Right, so we'll come over here, label it B. Okay, and then the last thing we want to do, whoop, I'm moving my picture, not my text box. Here we go. <clears throat> I actually do need to move my picture a little bit. There we go, fix that up. Last thing we need to do is we need to fix our shapes because they're bright orange, right? So the way we do that is we come over here, we're gonna fill the shape with black and we're gonna make sure the outline is also black. Okay, we're gonna fill, make sure the outline is black. So now when we look at this, our figure looks great. So we have all black and white, we have our scales, we have our stars. We have our letters that indicate which component the star is. We have our arrows pointing to it. So the last thing that we're gonna do is we just need to take another screenshot of it so that it has the lines on it. So we're just gonna, once again, the command shift four, come up here and just highlight that region right again. Just come down here, make sure you're getting all of your things. Call it good and then this is done. This is our completed finder chart. So we can upload this into our Word document that we're using to write into our Google Docs, whatever we're doing. But that's actually everything you know on need to know on making a finder chart. So thanks.